General Gibson, during the break, uh, have you had an opportunity to read the two-page um, excerpt from the Putnam Pitt relating to your office's prosecution of Mr. Looper? I have. Um, based on your having been uh, deeply involved in the in the prosecution of the case, are you able to um, tell the jury um, your side your uh, side or explanation uh, for the innuendos made by Mr. Davidian or whoever the author is in the Putnam Pit in those articles? I'm going to object to that question. is awfully vague. Uh, what innuendo in, in particular are you referring to? All right, let me just ask it this way. What is your response to what Mr. Davidian has published there, if it's Mr. either his editor or author? Well, I have to quote some of it to respond. It starts out how it feels to be short shorn without mention of honor, guts, glory, integrity, ethics, competence, or brains. How much decency we feel we must see to satisfy District Attorney General Bill Gibson's seeming, at least to us, after thoughtful consideration for months and years with no malice, something that in the past the Putnam Pitt would unattractively have called inferiority, I must control, sociopath-driven need to prevail. And then it asks the question, why? And then it answers, how do we feel about D.A. Gibson prosecuting the Looper murder case? And the first response is how we would feel if the case were jeopardized because he insists on prosecuting despite his links to the case, which the implication is I shouldn't have prosecuted the case because I have some links to the case, uh, which is totally false. That I had no, inappropriate, no links to the case whatsoever that would make it inappropriate or ineffective for me to prosecute it. How we feel about the chances of being Gibson of Gibson's being forced to testify? Um, I, there was a point at the trial that the defense tried to call me as a witness in their case for some unknown reason. How we would feel if Gibson were committed to a psychiatric hospital, driven in one of Sheriff Jerry Abson's cars two weeks before the trial, just before he was to testify about setting up Byron Looper. Not sure, except it may re refer to a gentleman named John Wayne Dedman who said that he had conspired with Looper to set me up. Uh, how we would feel if we had been fed lies. I'm going to object and move to strike that as, as a hearsay as to what John Wayne Dedman said. And that statement should be stricken. So John no, Wayne Dedman said it. In, how we would feel about corruption, conniving, and justice disregarded how we would feel about political use of the criminal justice system. Some, some theory that the Looper prosecution for the murder of Senator Burks was political. And I'm going to object to the speculation as to his testimony as to what, how Bill Gibson interprets this. It's what he's talking about. It's what he's always talked about. How we would feel if Burke's killer stays free because Gibson needs a witness against Looper, suggesting that, that even at this point in time that Looper's not the killer. Then it comes on over. And I'm says, going to object to that characterization and object to the speculation as to what that means and what it suggests. And that, that testimony should be also moved to have it stricken. And then it's got here a picture of me with a circle slash over my face. And the headline is how we feel about what you can tell from a man's eyes. Whether or not we feel you can tell whether he was a bad, bad boy. Uh, and over the circle slash that's over my face, it has what would seem to be a quote from me saying, will you forgive me? I have faith in God. I won't do it again as far as you know. I swear. And then it comes on down and says, does it feel like Billy's been a bad, bad boy? Did it feel bad when you were feeling you were being a bad, bad boy? If it didn't feel like I was being bad, but in quotation marks. And those are things that, at least by innuendo and implication, seem to be quotes for me, which they are absolutely not. I'm going to object to move to have that strike and is, is stricken as to uh, who, what it characterizes, what it represents, who it says. Uh, that's pure speculation on his part as to who it's... I assume implying. the jury is going to see this exhibit. I would move to strike that comment. We're going to 
to uh, introduce that as uh, one of the many articles that is published on the Putnam Pit relevant to whether or not the Putnam Pit uh, addresses the subject matter of the promotion of econ the economic welfare, commerce, and tourism in the end in industry in the area. And you would agree that that's, that is a, a, a excerpt from the Putnam Pit website, correct, Mr. Presum President? Presumably it is an excerpt from the Putnam Pit, but if it does, uh, his comments as to how he interprets it are totally irrelevant uh, and uh, speculation as to what he thinks the article means. It's his interpretation, and any, any statements made there would be more prejudicial uh, than probative of any uh, reason that you've stated that you wish to introduce this into evidence. Well, we would and we res have certainly reserved this particular matter for uh, further review by the court. Well, the jury can make its own determination, but this is extremely representative. I'm going to move to strike that. I'm going to move to strike that. I'm going to move to strike that. Mr. Gibson, you're not here as an attorney, and if I make an objection, the court's not here, but they would tell you, as I'm sure you've seen when you've been in a courtroom, that you have to stop talking when objections made. I am moving to strike your comments as to what the jury can and will do, and I would think as an attorney you would know that and that you're, you're starting to be, your behavior is starting to become objectionable. Uh, Mr. Harris, what our intent is to do is to uh, let the jury see the exhibit, uh, let them uh, assess their interpretation and hear uh, General Gibson's response. That's all we're going to do. We'll let the court decide. I agree. I'll but, move on. All right. All let right. me say this. Put this on the record. But you would agree that as a witness, he does not have. He he cannot tell that. He is not to directly address the jury and tell them what they can and can't do. I and I and I, I know, Mr. Gibson, you're used to being an attorney, and therefore you're used to talking to the jury. But you're in a, here as a witness today, and so you re you got it right. It's a little bit different. I understand. I mean, I, I've not done that in your role yet, so I wouldn't know how I would react either. Um, Mr. Gibson, let me ask you, um, with respect to the um, matters of the Putnam Pit that discuss the operation of the Office of the District Attorney General in the 13th Judicial District, um, do those articles um, characterize that office in any kind of a fair light? No uh, whatsoever, no fair light at all. Um, no objectivity, no fairness, and this is a perfect example of, of the kind of uh, publication, the, the smut that he puts out in his publication. With respect to the role of the Office of the District Attorney General for the 13th Judicial District in uh, or let me strike that. Let me ask it this way. With respect to the question of whether the Putnam Pit um, in its articles uh, as they address the Office of the uh, District Attorney General in the 13th Judicial District, uh, does the Putnam Pit do anything to promote the welfare of the community? I'm going to object as that is a conclusory opinion for which uh, he's certainly not an expert on that subject. And, uh, and I don't know that he's qualified to give a, a lay opinion on this particular matter. Go ahead. I've never seen anything in the Putnam Pit that did anything but depreciate the well-being of this community. And I will add that inappropriately in most cases. Is there anything in the Putnam Pit uh, that you've seen um, as it relates to law enforcement and the criminal justice system in the Putnam County area? Is there anything, well let me just ask you, how would you uh, believe that someone thinking that the, uh, about locating a business here uh, well, let's start with that. Someone seeking to locate a business here or do business uh, there, uh, how would they interpret, or, or excuse me, how, how would the Putnam Pit cast this area um, in terms of the, the, the criminal justice system? 
I'm going to object to that question is vague. I'm not sure I understand it. And to the extent it calls for him to give an opinion as to other, how other people would react, I'd certainly think it would be speculative. And he's in no, there's no foundation that he can give an, that type of opinion as to what other people think. The misrepresentations of the Putnam pit would, if believed, if reviewed by people, uh, it would cast this area in such a, a poor light, um, in my realm particularly in regards to the criminal justice system, to suggest that there's dead babies in the district attorney's backyard, that uh, the tax assessor was first prosecuted or persecuted inappropriately for political reasons while the killer of the state senator is still running free, that the district attorney is a, a cocaine user, a cocaine addict, none of which, none of these things are true, and they cast this area in a terrible light for anybody that, that should happen to see it. I'm going to move to strike that answer for the reasons previously gave when I gave the objection uh, uh, and is somewhat non-responsive and his opinion for which he had, there's no foundation for his opinion to be given. Let me ask you hypothetically, um, if you were uh, running a web, does the district attorney general's office run a website? We don't. The district attorney's conference does, but our local office does not. Um, if you were running a uh, website with web links with the goal of promoting uh, the Putnam County area, hoping to attract uh, businesses, hoping to attract visitors to their area, hoping to attract families who may want to move here. Um, would you believe that the Putnam pit meets the criteria of promoting to the area to, to such persons? I'm going to object to this uh, question as it is a uh, cause for speculation. Uh, there's no foundation that he can give this opinion. Uh, and any opinion he would give would be totally speculative. Uh, and there's no showing that he has any knowledge whatsoever. Uh, and he certainly has indicated he's never ran a website. And this question should be stricken. I absolutely do not believe that it does anything to promote the goals of the Cookville website. I can't imagine that anybody that had ever read one word of it would think differently. Your witness. I would call for an object move to strike that last statement by him also as a uh, conclusion, a conclusory opinion of an ultimate question for the jury. Do you need a break, Bill? No, I'm fine. Mr. Gibson, um, you're a politician, correct? I'm an elected official. And you're a politician, correct? Depending on your definition. Of that. Well, I run for office, yeah. Previously, you gave a deposition this afternoon in which you stated, yes, you were a politician, did you not? I think I answered you that I'm an elected official. I do run for office once every eight years. If you call that a politician, then yes, I am a politician. Well, do you call that a politician? Well, politician means different things to different people and, and often has a, a really poor connotation, but I am an elected official. If I'm a politician, I'm a poor one. Okay. Well, you've actually been successful as a politician uh, if, if the definition of politician is somebody who runs for office, haven't you? I think I've done a good job in the DA's office. But you've been successful in terms that you've been able to uh, be popularly elected, correct? I have been elected and re-elected one time. You're a public official, correct? That's correct. You're a public servant, correct? Correct. And you would do nothing to try to misuse your office, is that correct? I would hope to never misuse my office. Right. And as a public official, you would not deny somebody a government benefit just because you disagreed with their viewpoint, would you? So in the realm of my office, if a critic of mine came in to seek to prosecute a, to seek prosecution of a crime or to seek the services of the district attorney's office, and it was somebody, even though they were critical of me, they would still come to my office uh, seeking our help, I guess I would talk it over with the person. I would say, you know, you're critical of me. Would you be comfortable, would you be really comfortable 
having my office serve your needs in, in this criminal matter in this case. If they were and I felt comfortable with it, I would try to proceed with it. Um, otherwise, there is a, a procedure in place where another district attorney can be appointed. If the person said, you know, I don't, I don't like you, I don't really, there's been a crime committed against me, I don't want you handling it, I could get them another uh, district attorney appointed from another part of the state um, and have no contact with the case, but still ensure that that person got the services of the DA's office. Well, I will move to strike that as non-responsive. And let me ask the question, and it's, I'm starting from the general, from a general moving to the specific, if you will. You would not deny somebody the benefits as a public official. You would not deny them the benefit of government services strictly because you disagree with them over their viewpoint. Well, I can, I can speak only from the standpoint of the services that I provide, and that's, that's just what I just got through telling you, that nobody should be denied, uh, no victim of a crime should be denied a competent prosecution just because they're, they're critical of the local DA. Okay, let me try this again. Okay. This question seems to call for a yes and no, and, I, and you don't seem to be responding that way. Would you, as a public official, deny someone benefits of, of your government office or resources of your government office because of their viewpoint? I would never deny a citizen competent prosecution because I disagree with their viewpoint on some issue. Now, you previously took a deposition that I wish to enter, but we do not have that prepared, and I will I reserve the right to introduce that this portions of the deposition at trial. Uh, or we can, I guess, postpone this until we can get the deposition prepared. Mr. Ruffey, how do you wish to proceed? The, the deposition will be used in any way that the deposition can be used under the federal rules and civil procedure. That's true. Well, and the, the rulings of the court. Well, since, since the deposition hasn't been prepared since you gave me such short notice, for this matter, I don't have the uh, transcript with which to confront him, and therefore I reserve the right to. Uh, you can designate the page did you, line numbers. Right. The did you not previously testify at the deposition that you that you said a public official could not deny someone government resources or government benefits because of, of a viewpoint? That's exactly what I'm saying now. Uh, except I don't know about could not, certainly should not. Um, I don't know that, you know, if, if a public official was determined to violate ethics and moral standards that he could, but he sure shouldn't. Right. But I can only speak in the context of my office and my well, profession. Mr. Gibson, I'm not accusing you of, 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 doing, uh, of, de of denying anyone. Do you understand my question is not accusing you of denying anybody government benefits or government resources because of somebody's viewpoint. I'm just getting your opinion as a public official as to how you conduct your office. Well, and I want you to understand that my answer is in the context of my office, which is the assume okay. what I assume is what you're asking. And you've stated you would not you would not and you should not deny somebody government benefits, correct? I would not because of the viewpoint. I would not and certainly no elected district attorney should deny somebody competent prosecution because they disagree with the person's Point. And the First Amendment protects of the United the First Amendment of the United States Constitution protects people's rights to, to criticize public officials. Isn't that correct? That is correct. And part of the protection of the First Amendment would mean that public officials cannot retaliate against individuals because they've criticized a public official. Is that correct? Well, I assume that it would be illegal, certainly morally and ethically and, and illegal to retaliate against a citizen because they are critical of your office. Do you think that denying somebody government resources because they're critical of, uh, of a viewpoint, because that person expressed a critical viewpoint, do you think that could constitute a form of retaliation? Uh, objection at this point on the grounds that it, it's not relevant and it calls for a legal conclusion. Go ahead and answer. I don't understand the question. Okay. Would denying, for example, I'll try it by examples to help you understand. For example, if somebody had criticized you 
as, as district attorney, mm -hmm. and then that person came to your office for a child support collection matter. Mm -hmm. I understand you've already mentioned about conflicts, but assuming they wanted your office to pursue the child collection matter, would you, would you deny somebody uh, the right to uh, take advantage of your office and its child support collection strictly because you disagreed with their viewpoint on a matter? I can't imagine a scenario if the person was comfortable with my office being the agency that pursued their matter and I was still comfortable working with the person. I can't imagine a scenario where we would not go forward. But as I said before, if it were, it, it's, a, it's a bizarre sort of question where you're telling me that a person that's critical of my office is coming to my office for services. Typically that person is not going to come to my office. They're going to come try to find a way to get another district attorney, which there is a procedure to do that. And first, they would probably come to your office, But if the person came to my office, and we have had situations where people, for one reason or another, were uncomfortable with our office, maybe we had prosecuted relatives of theirs in the past, or whatever reason, and we have referred those people into this process where they can get a district attorney appointed through a neutral process from another area. So the question you're asking is, would no, I, no, no, no. I, I'm going to move to strike this as non-responsive. I think I gave this example to help you understand my question. I don't, and, and I made it clear that I don't. I understand about your conflicts of interest. The point, point blank, you just—it's—it's it's wrong. It would be wrong if they insisted that that they had a right as a citizen to child support collection. It would be wrong to deny them solely because of their viewpoint. Isn't that true? That yeah, that's absolutely true. Okay, thank you. That was, that, see, it was simple. Um, but you're asking that in the context of my office, and I'm having to answer that in the context. Basically, I'm, I, basically I'm asking you that in the context as a public official. Um, now, you'd agree that Jeff Davidian and the Putnam has published stories in the Putnam pit that have been critical of you. Jeff Davidian has published stories in the Putnam Pit that have been critical of me. I mean, that, that, that's, that's just an understatement practically, isn't it? Well, his, his stories have, have been lies and innuendo and implication. And well, that's not my question. I'd maybe a, strike your an response. element of truth that is spun to the point that it loses any semblance. My question truth. is, it's pretty clear that he... he, he writes negative stories about you, correct? Right. Your question was, that's an understatement, isn't it? And yeah, that's an understatement. That, that's negative. how you answer a yes-no question, Mr. Gibson. Would you agree? Negative and untruthful stories. Negative. Well, I didn't ask about untruthful stories, did I? You, you seem to want to get, in your testimony here, are you trying, you seem to stay on that line uh, that, that every, you will always say that the Putnam Pit is untruthful. Is that as a result of your discussion with your attorney, the, the attorneys for the city of Cookville here this as afternoon? As a result of raiding the Putnam Pit over the years. Okay. Well, you don't have to put, would you agree you don't have to put that spin in every time I ask a question? Well, um, when your question calls for that answer, then I feel like I should give you that. Well, if I ask it's negative and I don't ask about truth, explain to me how you feel you can just add whatever you want in your testimony. Well, to me, the explanation of whether it's truthfulness or untruthful goes to the negativity of it. Oh, so you think it's the Putnam Pitt's negative because it's untruthful? Well, I think it's extremely negative and untruthful. Okay. Okay. Now, previously in the deposition, you indicated that you, you, indicated you had read a story in the Putnam Pitt that seemed to say that you had spent uh, too much money having a sign painted on your office on Jefferson Avenue. That's correct. I did spend too much money. You also said that, you, that the Putnam Pit was truthful. Uh, you, you agreed with that expression of an opinion. I didn't say the Putnam Pit was truthful. I said in that particular instance, he accused me of spending too much money on that sign, and I did spend too much money on the sign. Well, it might take a while. Would you like to have that portion of your deposition read to you? Sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not denying what you say. I spent too much money on the sign, and when he printed that in the Putnam Pit, that particular sentence was the truth. 
Okay, so you are you so so the Putnam Pitt did that that story was true, correct? Well, that sentence was true. I don't recall the whole story, but he he accused me on that one occasion of spending too much on the signing. Yeah. The sign turned out to be too expensive. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with him writing a story that says you spent too much money on something, is it? There's nothing wrong with it? Yeah. Is there anything wrong with him writing a story that says criticizing your office nope, for spending nope, too much the money? The First Amendment gives him the right to do that, and, and in that instance, it was the truth. Okay. Um... Mr. Davidian also wrote a story uh, that indicated you had been critical of Judge John Turnbull. Isn't that correct? He did. And you agreed that that was true, that you had made some critic, You had exercised your First Amendment rights uh, by criticizing John Turnbull. Right. I'm not sure the story in its entirety fairly stated the, the criticism, but there was a time when I was critical of Judge Turnbull and in a story in the Putnam Pit, he did write some story about me being critical of the judge. Is it fair to say that you say you're not sure what other things were said in that article? Is it fair to say you generally disagree with Mr. Davidian's viewpoint? Well, it's not that I disagree with his viewpoint. It's just that he publishes things that don't accurately reflect the truth. Do you agree with his viewpoint? I don't agree or disagree with his viewpoint. I disagree when I read things in there that are stated in a way that I know is not true. Okay, it's your opinion that they're not true. Well, factually, I know they're not true. He, he's, and I'll give you a good example. Uh, he, he's implied several times in the. I'm going to strike this. I've not asked for any examples, and he's answered my question. Go, go ahead and complete your example. Several times in the Putnam Pit, he has stated that I'm, I'm a cocaine user. One time, he came into my office and asked me point blank if I've ever used cocaine, and I told him point blank that I have not, which is the truth. So he continues to write these articles saying that I do use cocaine and saying that, you know, that there was a headline that I had the gall to deny cocaine use. Gibson denies cocaine use, which implies to the, the motoring public that obviously, you know, Gibson is a cocaine user who is now denying it. And that's the tool that Germany That's how you read it. Isn't that well, true? I think, I think that's a widely accepted, and I don't, I'm not sure if they call it gutter journalism or yellow dog journalism, but You're you not... suggest something it's being true without actually saying that it's true. You, you send the message without actually making the statement. Do you deny cocaine usage? Sure. I've how never, else do you? So I've my never question, used cocaine. Right. So how else do you report the story that you denied that? What What is newsworthy about my denial of something that's never been raised? You know, it, the story is obvious to anybody that reads it is that he wants to suggest to the public that I am a cocaine user who is now denying it. And that's just not true. You think that's Mr. Davidian's viewpoint about about that story? I don't know about his viewpoint. I know that he's published that, and I know that it, in essence, is a lie when taken in, in the big picture. You don't know what his viewpoint is on that story? What his viewpoint is on what story? On the story Gibson denies cocaine usage. Apparently he has a viewpoint that I do, or at that time was, a cocaine user, which was false. I do, so, I so, do deny that. Right, generally. so that was his viewpoint. Correct? Well, I don't. I can't tell you what his viewpoint is. Well, then you just testified that you knew what his viewpoint is. If his viewpoint is that I'm a cocaine user, then I do deny it as being accurate. Do you know how to tell what the viewpoint is of a story? No, I don't. Not not Mr. Davidian's stories. You you don't know how to read a story and tell what a viewpoint is. Not Mr. Davidian's. Okay. Mr. Davidian uh, wrote an article about uh, he had gone got public records from the city of Cookville about your grades. Do you recall testifying in the deposition about that? I do. Okay. And you made a D, he, he reported you made a D in English literature. Right. Was that true? I think I 
made a D in English literature. I didn't go back and read the transcripts, but if, if Mr. Davidian claims that he got the transcript, I would not deny getting the, the D in English literature. You also made two Ds in American history while you were at Tennessee Tech. Isn't I, that true? I do recall having a hard time with American history. Okay. And he wrote that article. Was that true or false? That he wrote the article? Yes. I don't know. It was on the Putnam Pit. So you know, you, you, you never saw that particular article in the Putnam Pit? I did. As I'm sitting here today, I can't testify who authored the article. Oh, okay. Um, but I assume if it's on the Putnam Pit, he either wrote it or published it. Okay. Now, he wrote in that article, he also wrote that you were a uh, D-plus student at Putnam Senior High. Do you know whether that's true or not? He wrote that I had a particular grade point average, 1.66, and I'm right. not sure that that's true or false. I, I didn't make stellar grades in high school. Okay. And so you don't, you're not saying that that was a falsehood that he wrote, correct? That's correct. You're saying you don't know. Right. Okay. He also wrote that you had been a dishwasher at Holiday Inn. That was correct? true. And that was true, mm -hmm. right? Started when I was 14. <coughs> he wrote down your references uh, when you applied to be a police officer as being Mrs. Jared Maddox, Mr. H. S. Barnes, and Lonnie Hill. He, do you know, if he wrote that, would that have been true? I think that's true. That was in 1976, and I think that was Lonnie Hillis. He was a, an employer of mine at Holiday Inn. Okay, other than he got the name right, though, basically he'd written the truth about you there, right? But those were my references? Yes. Yeah, in that instance, that would have been the truth. Now, did you actually read the article, How Many Dead Babies in D.A. Gibson's Backyard? I can't remember. The, I can't really remember the substance of that article. I think I read part of it and then just quit. Okay. Because it's disturbing to read something like that about okay. dead so, babies. So you didn't read, you're now testifying, you didn't even read the whole article, correct? Well, I, I've read... You know, several articles on the Putnam Pit over the years I've read in their entirety and several I've scanned and others I've just sort of gotten the, the substance of and quit. It seems like that article was about methamphetamine. I understand that. Did you, my question to you was, did you read that whole article? I'm not sure. You're not sure? It's possible you didn't read the whole article, correct? Obviously. I'm he not sure. The article, he could look at it and tell you. Is that an objection, Mr. Guffey? No, it's a suggestion to speed up the proceeding. I'm sorry for interfering. Go yes, it's, it's, I, I object to that as you took up in a substantial amount of time. I'm, I'm going as best I can. Um, I could read the article and tell you more accurately. Well, I've not asked you about the article. I'm simply asking whether you read the whole article. Well, if I could read the article now, I could tell you for sure. But you're not sure, are you? No, I'm not. Okay, so when you comment on the on the on the Putnam Pit, there's a lot of articles that you haven't read that have been on the Putnam Pit, correct? I'm sure there's a lot of articles that have been on the Putnam Pit that I haven't read. So it's possible there's articles that have been on the Putnam Pit that were positive about Cookville, contrary to your opinion that nothing on the Putnam Pit is is positive about Cookville. All I can say is I've never seen anything on the Putnam Pit that suggested anything positive about Cookville. But you've also said you have, and you've also now testified that you haven't read every article on the Putnam Pit. Sure, it would be ludicrous to say you've read every article that's ever been published in some publication. I, I don't sit down and read it cover to cover. Would it equal, be equally ludicrous then to say that you've uh, never seen a positive article on the Putnam Pit when you haven't made an effort to see every article on the Putnam Pit? Well, I read the Putnam Pit, at least the headlines, uh, fairly thoroughly for a period of time. Um, but I can't say that I've read every article that's ever been published. I think if he ever wrote anything positive about Cookville and Putnam County, it would be the, probably the talk of the town, but I don't know. But you don't know, right? So your testimony basically here is just speculation of your viewpoint of the, about the Putnam Pit. Isn't that true? Well, it's not my viewpoint. I'm saying factually I've, I've read a lot of the Putnam Pit, and 
I know the tone of the Putnam kid, and I personally have never seen anything positive or anything that's not negative about Cookville, Putnam County, and the individuals that live and work here on the Putnam pit. Now, would you agree that methamphetamines uh, is a problem in the in the 13th Judicial District? Absolutely. And it's your and your office tries to correct that problem, don't they? Well, law enforcement in general is struggling with that problem in this whole area, all of the Cumberland Plateau and, and a lot of places in the country. Our office does our part. We prosecute the cases. And you would agree that uh, the methamphetamine uh, problem in this area has an effect on the economic welfare of this area, correct? I would assume that methamphetamine, a methamphetamine problem has an impact on the economic welfare here as anywhere. Okay. Uh, and you also previously testified in your deposition that it, that the methamphetamine problem has impact on industry in this area, correct? I assume that drug use, including methamphetamine, has an impact on industry here and everywhere else. And, and it's your responsibility, you, you have a responsibility as the top law enforcement prosecutor in this area to at least address these problems, don't you? I do. Okay. Um, do you have any problem with Mr. Davidian writing about how you address these problems? Do I have a problem with it? It does, just in general. Not, not obviously, obviously you don't like his opinion about how you go about doing it, because he obviously, you would agree with me that Mr. Davidian obviously does not uh, think you do a good job no matter what you do, correct? Correct. Okay. But nonetheless, you would agree that the First Amendment allows him to criticize you and make and make statements and publish statements about how you uh, go about addressing the drug problem in this area. I think so, but I think the First Amendment requires that it not be slanderous or libelous, and, and I think there's an implication that there be some element of truth to what he's saying. There's no dead babies in my backyard. Okay. Is it possible that that was a figure of speech? I guess it's possible, but I don't know how... You know, how would it be read? Well... It, there's a headline that says dead babies in the DA's backyard, and wh what does that say? Mr. Gibson, you live in an apartment, too, don't you? Sure. You don't really have a backyard, do you? I do have a backyard. At the apartment complex? Yes, sir. Okay. Sorry. Uh, well, in any event, uh, but the, isn't it po Let me ask you this. Does, does the meth methamphetamine has had a tremendous impact on children in this area, correct? Uh, everywhere methamphetamine exists, it impacts children because the people that manufacture methamphetamine that have children manufacture the drug in their homes often with the <coughs> children there. And that the, the, the process of manufacturing methamphetamine is very dangerous and it involves chemical processes that put off fumes. And this is a very difficult situation for, for children to be in, but it's not a situation that's unique to to Cookville or this area, it's unique, it's everywhere that methamphetamine is manufactured. Right, uh, but he does, but, but the, I guess the answer to that question is it, that the methamphetamine problem could be detrimental and harmful to children, correct? I don't know. You don't know whether methamphetamines could be harmful That's to children? That's not what you asked. Well, I, all right, I'm asking it now. Methamphetamine is inherently harmful to children. Okay, and so if children died as the result of Jeff alleging, Jeff Davidian alleging that you're not doing a good job, isn't it possible that that's what he means by how many dead babies in your back, in, in D.A. Gibson's backyard? If children died as a result of his allegations? No, if, if you're right, that's pretty confusing. Let me try to break it down. The, if the gist of the article is that you're not doing a good job, regardless of whether that's true or not, if Mr. Davidian expresses that opinion, isn't it possible he simply means you're not doing a good job and that could result in um, the deaths of children as a result of methamphetamine problem? Well, I don't know how to predict what Mr. Davidian means when he writes an article with the headline, Dead Babies in the DA's Backyard. If, if he is suggesting through that article 
that, and I can't sit here and tell you what, that I know the content of the article because I'm not sure which article even that we're talking about, but anything is possible. I, don't, I can't sit here and tell you that it's impossible what he may have meant. But I do know the headline, <coughs> Dead Babies in the District Attorney Gibson's Backyard suggests a lot of things that would come to the reader's mind ahead of that. The DA is a child killer. The DA is hiding, you know, the DA is a, a John Wayne Gacy. The DA's got dead bodies buried all around his yard. I don't even know what, what percentage of the population would read past the headline. Or, beyond that, what percentage of the population would understand the implications being made in the body of the article by Mr. Davidian? Well, isn't Mr. Davidian, show, doesn't, doesn't the fact that Mr. Davidian writes, the, writes that headline suggest that he has greater faith in the intelligence of the Putnam Pitt readership than you do? I think Mr. Davidian writes that article because he wants to attack me and everybody else around here in any way he can, well, regardless of, of the truth or the implication or the innuendo. Well, actually, when you read that article, it only attacks you. It doesn't attack everybody else around here, does it? I don't know if that particular article does or not, but the next one probably goes on to the next person that he's got a vendetta against. Well, you know, you're speculating here, and I would move to strike that to prove that statement. By the way, we referred to this article as being a dead baby, how many dead babies in Bill Gibson's backyard is being by Jeff Davidian, but the byline that you read earlier did say it was by C.D. Norman. Isn't that true? I think that's true. Do you know C.D. Norman? I don't. Okay. I assume, I assume that was just a, a co-name of Jeff Davidian. Okay. I didn't know that there is a real C.D. Norman. So you've, you've made a lot of assumptions about what you've read in the pit without knowing all the facts. Is that what you're saying? Well, the things that I've read in the pit speak for themselves. Well, my question to you is, have you made assumptions about things you read in the pit uh, without knowing all the facts? No. Well, you just said you assumed that C.D. Norman was a made-up name, didn't you? Well, that's not the substance of something I've read in the pit. You know, the pit has got Lawyer X and Gorilla Student X and Advocate X and all of these anonymous names and... You know, Lawyer X interviewed Witness X, who says the DA is on cocaine. And but you, so I assume that Jeff Davidian is the type of person who writes either under a lot of different names or anonymous, accepts a lot of anonymous authorship. Well, there's, you, there's some reason that they want to hide the names, and I assume that C.D. Norman is probably not a real person or is a real person that's not the real name. Well, previously this was made in the exhibit. Uh, this is... Uh, Mr. Gibson, if you apologize, let me identify that. Since we have not used, for purposes of video depositions, we have not used uh, exhibit numbers. But uh, it would be, if you have it, I'd like to keep this one. You, you were handed an exhibit by Mr. Duffy that starts out, it's bash Bill Gibson time. Mr. Harris, let me suggest this. Everything that I have showed him is, consists of three documents. Why don't we make those one, two, three, and this four? So well, you did show him this article, too. It's Bashville Gibson time. Th that's this, yeah. Right. Okay, exhibit. Which I don't know what we've not, we've not designated it. We'll compare it. Go ahead. Previously shown on your direct examination as uh, it's the article starting out, it's Bash Bill Gibson time. Okay. Uh, let me show you this one because this is, this is a little bit better printout. Do you see the picture at the bottom of that page? Mm -hmm. It says C.D. Norman. I do. It starts out and says that C.D. Norman went to uh, high school with you. Mm -hmm. Do you see his picture? Mm -hmm. Do you recognize that person? No. Okay. 
Does the initial CD stand for some other? Uh, you Is know, there more of a name that I can try to? Uh, it's a good question because to tell you the truth, I don't know. His, I, I don't know his name any other way either. I don't so I wish I could help. Remember going to high school with a CD Norman and assume that that's a lie. Okay. Well, when you saw this and you saw this picture, <coughs> yet you still assumed the CD Norman Sunny Boy was a made-up name. Um. Yeah. I don't, you know, if there's a person whose picture that is that claims they went to high school with me and what does it say up to me with English or something, I assume that that's all a lie. Well, you, was, you seem to make a lot of assumptions that are negative, in your opinion, about uh, Jeff Davidian and the Putnam Pit, don't you? Well, I don't recognize the picture. I've never heard of a C.D. Norman who claims to have gone to high school with me, and I think it's fair to assume that that's not true. Do you know for a fact whether or not Jeff Devine has, has spoken with sources that indicated that you had used cocaine? No. I asked him one time, you know, if that was, if there really were these sources, and it seems like he said that he couldn't tell me that or something. When you indicated that there's a lot of anonymous names or that he doesn't want to reveal sources, is it possible that it's because you're a, political power, a politically powerful person? and capable of retribution against these individuals if their names were known? I don't think Mr. Davidian could ever cite an instance where I've used any power of the DA's office to take retribution on anybody. That's not what I asked you. Is it possible that he doesn't want to reveal these names because of your political position? I don't, I don't know what's possible or impossible with him. Sure, it's well, I'm anything. not talking about what's possible or impossible with him. Is it possible? Is it possible that you might, that you are, is it, isn't it true that you're in, a, a, in a, a powerful political position here in Putnam County? Well, I've got a position that is looked upon as politically powerful. Okay. And so some people may not want to, to uh, may not want to publicly put their name out there uh, when they say, give a false opinion or a negative opinion, not necessarily a false opinion, but a negative opinion about you. Well, that's certainly possible. False opinion is... What about a negative? Okay, I'll agree to you. I'll agree to you that. I guess it's pretty fair if somebody's going to lie about you. That would be a pretty, that'd be a pretty silly thing to do against the district attorney, wouldn't it? If somebody wants to publish some uh, publication and a web page that's full of lies and innuendo and, and slander, then I could see where the person would not want to put their name. But what about other people who, who act, what if there are other people who actually wrote these articles? What do you mean? Well, what if, what if there's a lawyer X, for example, and he may not want his identity revealed if he writes a critical article about you? Isn't it possible he might not want to do that because of your position as the district attorney? What if there is really a Lawyer X, would it be possible that this possible Lawyer X would not want to put his name on these articles? Because of uh, that lie possible about retribution from you. I guess, sure. Yeah. So you really, the point is you really don't know whether these people exist or not, do you? I sure don't. And you just assume that Mr. Davidian made these up, names up, right? Well, I assume from the, the harmony of the tone of all of these opinions that Mr. Gibson, true or false, did, yes or no, did you assume that these names were made up? Lawyer X and CD Norman. Dog X and Dog CD X. Norman. I assume that, that a lot of those names were made up. And that Jeff Davidian was the sole author of these points of view, correct? That was your, that was your opinion about the, about the Putnam Pit, right? right? Yeah, and that's based on the fact that they all seem to make the same statement in different harmonies. Now, Mr. Davidian wrote negative things about Byron Looper. Isn't that true? I don't remember a lot of that. I think he, uh, at one point, wrote an article that, you know, Byron Looper was a, a good guy, a target of persecution, but Byron Looper certainly, you know, he needs to straighten up and and not disappoint everybody. So. What article are you referring to? I'm not sure. You're not but, you sure, know, are all, you? Uh, all of the stuff in the Putnam Pit, it sort of at some point blends in your 
Right. And, and you and you have your assumptions about what's in the pit, but you don't know whether that article exists or not. No, I know. I read the article. Okay. Yeah. Even in this article, the, the Bible, Bible Belt Wealth, I'm not sure what number we're using. Uh, that one right there, that's correct. Uh, doesn't it say in that first paragraph, Looper, an insatiable office seeker. Where are you reading? Well, look in the first, it's first paragraph. That would be that first block of uh, sentences. Below Caesar. See where it says, see the date line, Cookville, Tennessee? Cookville, Tennessee, okay. That's the, referring to that as the first paragraph okay. of the article. Um, the last sentence, does it not say, Looper, an insatiable office seeker, opposed Burke's re-election on the state ballot two weeks later? Is that not what that sentence says? Mm -hmm. That That's hardly a, a favorable view of Byron Looper, is it? An insatiable office seeker? Yes. I guess it's kind of a neutral. It's not a favorable or unfavorable. Do you know what insatiable means? Yes, sir, and I know what a paragraph is, too. Okay. But well, what I'm saying is I don't read that statement and as being particularly favorable or disfavorable. It's saying he's a person that continuously seeks office. Okay. Okay, well, let's go down to the uh, uh, last paragraph on this page. And doesn't this article also say, so say it is a miracle that Luper, an ornery, egotistical, thoroughly vain and political man whose political life displayed little in the way of family values or sentimentality could garner such a presumption of in innocence in a district where the DA's election was peppered with a slogan. And it says that on that page. Now, the part I just read, do you think that calling Byron Looper ornery and egotistical is, is being favorable to Byron Looper? Well, I think Mr. Davidian has to demonstrate some semblance of objectivity to try to keep an audience. And the purpose of this paragraph is to say that Looper can't get a fair trial and to talk about my election being peppered with the slogan, I have faith in God, which I have no idea where that came from. Okay, so you're as, saying... It's a campaign slogan. So what I'm saying is that Mr. Davidian apparently has to do something to disguise his... Inherent support of Byron Looper. I see. So when Jeff Davidian writes things, when he writes negative things about Byron Looper, he's disguising some hidden intent. Is that your is that your viewpoint regarding sure. the Putnam Pit? If you take that in the context of everything that he's ever written about, is that Burks your viewpoint regarding Looper, the Putnam Pit? Then it would be Mr. my Gibson. viewpoint. My question is: Is that your viewpoint regarding the Putnam Pit? That whenever Jeff writes something negative about Byron Looper that he's doing that to disguise some hidden intent. Is that your viewpoint of what the Putnam Pit does, yes or no? That is my viewpoint in the context of the overall tone of support that he has always shown for Byron Looper. I'm saying that he has to say something to appear to be halfway objective. time you did the Byron Looper trial, was there not a story going around that was covered that John Wayne Dedman, 